hello and welcome back to my channel and let's continue our alone in forbidden lands session two we now have marco um in a party with hurika and i know that i wrote hurik as the name but as it is a female wolf king uh for me i do not know why uh hurika sounds more like a female rather than Hurik. Hurik sounds like more a male man, at least to me. So I just add a, a A and instead of a C is a K. So Hurika is the Wolf King rogue that convinced Marco that she could help him uh, reaching uh, Marsh Haven. So for now, the only thing that we know is that Hurika was part of this band of bandits that took the control of Marsh Haven at least five years ago. And she was imprisoned by them for some reason and she left. She, I would say that she fled from, from Marsh Haven and now she thinks that she can come back. I do not know the reason for that and we will figure out together. So next day, morning we need to check the weather and for that once again i'm going to use the solo expansion still in beta version but it's totally um, usable so let's check the weather first so three it's a light breeze so no penalty on our rows but as it is clubs it means that light rain so it is still raining and we have a minus one to lead the way uh, and we can have a second card and the second card is seven we agree that we are on spring so it's mild so no problem it's just a light rain and we are here in this um, hex and we need to move to this one and we have like um, a river and we have a forest but it's mostly i would say grasslands or plains so let's roll let's roll let's check in this table if we have uh, an encounter but first actually first before that i need to roll uh, lead the way and i can roll actually by using hurika because she has way more survival and with wits than uh, Marco has. So let's let's roll. Not way more actually. I can see just one more. But I will Marco will roll for scout and Hurika will roll the leading the way. So let me roll. She has uh, three wits and she has five uh, survival skill points so let me roll and whoa four successes <laughs> so it's a lot uh, unfortunately in forbidden lands uh, we do not have a, a table that tells us what we can get from extra successes uh, we do have this on mutant year zero but we do not have this here so i could figure out with something here i could even uh, give them a bonus on the scouting role i could maybe give a plus two uh, but for now let's just understand that uh, Hurika led the way uh, with a huge amount of success. So let me see if we have uh, an encounter. So it's four of clubs, meaning that they need to check the random encounter from the Book of Beasts, page one, two, three. And for that, I need to roll two die, two dice. And we are mostly in planks, although we do have some a partial forest there, but I would say that it's it's a plain, it's two planks. So let me roll. The black is the first die and 54 
and we do have an encounter we have encounter 22 and 22 we have the petrified troll a monstrous silhouette taller than two men looms farther ahead in the terrain with its club raised for battle the figure seems intent on smashing anyone who passes by but let me roll actually the scout to see if marco uh, sees this uh, in a certain distance four wits and two scouting and let me roll and yes we have a success meaning that we can see it from a certain distance we are not uh, surprised by it so it is a basically a statue uh, that it's a petrified troll so they see this of course and they do not hear anything it's quiet and i would say that they approach of course cautiously and try to not make any noise and it's it soon becomes clear to the adventures that the menace shadow is harmless as it turns out to consist of a half crumbled rocks covered in moss and lichen so with a successful lore they could realize that these are actually remains of a troll turned to stone by the sun okay so let's roll lore to see if someone uh can figure out um hurika actually has lore two so i would roll five dice five dice with her and maku would be only four so let me roll for hurika And she has success so maybe marco see the silhouette and she said he says oh hurika there is something uh there and they approach uh cautiously and as soon as they they reach these remains uh hurika maybe explain it to 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 marco oh this this is a troll and yeah this is just the remains of a troll turned to stone by the sun and i think that he just spent some time looking at it uh amazed by this event sorry for interrupting uh the video uh but during the editing i just saw that i could find actually some uh silver coins and possibly a weapon of excellent quality that is relatively uh unscattered by the time so of course i cannot lose the opportunity of having this so for now i'm going to roll uh, the d6 to see how uh, much coins i will find uh, here in this event and i will afterwards decide for a weapon and then i will add this uh, weapon to the character sheet so let's see how much silver and six silver great so let's continue with our adventure so now we move to the next hex and for the next hex i need to roll once again um the lead the way oh actually it's raining it's raining so i need to remove one die i just forgot about that so we have a light rain meaning that we have a penalty but still we still have a lot of die here dice and no success and as it is hurika that is leading the way i cannot push this because she is a companion at this moment uh so we have a mishap so let me roll the mishap uh i need to roll two dice the black one is going to be the first the tens and we have a 64 and 64 says savage animal a wolf bear or other wild animals feels threatened and attacks you the gm choose an animal from the table on page one to six on the game master guide okay 
one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to roll a D6 and let's see. Four. One, two, three, four. So it's a crocodile, right? And this is not the random event. I could check before if we have a random event as well. So let me roll the random event. Let me see if we have a random event. And we have a 10 of spades. And once again, in the book of beasts, I need to check if we have an encounter. So once again, the black is going to be the first. 35 in a forest. And we have encounter 14. And we have the skeletal in the tree random event. Your travel weary eyes are met by an ominous sight. A skeletal in torn, threadbare robes dangling from a tree farther ahead. The head is bent forward at an unnatural angle and a thick iron chain attached to one of the branch branches is wrapped like a noose around the skeleton's neck. So it makes sense. So we have this skeleton and I think we have a crocodile below it. I need to roll um, the scouting to see if I am able to see the, the crocodile first. Just to make sure that we are not surprised by this animal and even by this uh, uh, skeleton hanging on the tree. So it's going to be uh, Marco rolling for die dice uh, for his wits and two dice for his scouting skills. Let's see. And I do not have a success. Uh, meaning, uh, I, I, I will not push. Should I push? I will push. Let me push. I, I need willpower. I do not have willpower. So let me roll again. And now I have two successes. Great. So what I think that happens is that um, as they, they move through the forest, they hear these uh, metal chains. Uh, noise uh, and Marco um, he he sees this skeleton but they do not see initially the crocodile wandering around so I think Marco is is, is young and curious so as he's curious he tries to approach this skeleton and Marco approached this skeleton, but luckily, before it attacks him, uh, Marco sees this crocodile moving in their direction. So as they are only three characters, I'm going to roll to use the regular rules here. So let's check the initiative first. So Marco... Hurika and the crocodile I will put here. So the crocodile is the last one. So Hurika goes first. And as soon as she sees this uh, crocodile, uh, I would say that it is uh, in near distance. Uh, so she would uh, just throw some knives to it. She wouldn't engage it directly. So for throwing knives, uh, she needs to roll her marksmanship and she does not have actually marksmanship so I'm going to roll just her agility and uh, one die from the th throwing knives so let's see if she can hit it whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't believe this can you see that I do not know what to say. <laughs> I, I it, it never happened. It never happened. I would say it's it's a critical failure. 
I, I do not know what happens. I, I, I have no clue. I just rolled five ones. There is no critical failure in the rules. But I need to definitely think about something. Uh, and I would say that um, Hurika was not aware of this crocodile. She just sees these. And although she was fast enough to react, to get her knives, I would say that she just goes prone for some reason. <laughs> She slipped in the floor. I do not know. She she fell and and yeah. So now she's prone. I need to punish her because I never seen this before. <laughs> this is the first time that I see this in Forbidden Lands. Okay. Uh, so this is her actions. She just lost her uh, slow action by uh, getting the throw knives. She would get actually the the fast action would be to get the the the, the knives and the. And then she would throw, but she just fell down. And that's it. She already acted. And okay, so, but Marco sees this as well. And maybe he was more prepared. And he just uh, gets his, his link. And this is his fast, fast action. And he wants to throw um, uh, bullets into his uh, crocodile. So let's see. He has uh, four agility, no marksmanship, so just this link die, and let's see if he he can do something. And he has two successes, great, meaning that the crocodile suffers two damage. So it has four strength, so now it only has two remaining strength. So, but he just, he spent his fast action to get this link and his slow action to throw the bullet. So now is the crocodile that's going to move to one, two, three, Hurika, four, five, six is Marku. And it goes to Marku and try, tries to bite him. The creature only has two strength. And actually, I need to ask the Oracle, because it has initially four strength, but as it took two damage, it's half of this uh, uh, health or strength. So I think this creature would just run away. Is this creature going to run away? And I'm going to get two cards because I think that it's most likely that this creature would just run away. And I have a yes here. Cool. So as soon as Marku throws the bullet, it hits this crocodile maybe in the eye or something like this, and this creature just uh, just run away. And Hurika is, is on the floor, uh, in the mud, <laughs> I would say, and Marco just asks uh, in a polite way, uh, Horika, are, are you okay? Are you fine? It, it, it runs away. Uh, you are safe now. But I think Horika is now, <laughs> how can I say this? He, he's, she, she is in shame. <laughs> like, oh, uh, yes, uh, I'm okay. Um, yeah, don't worry about this, Marco. Um, yeah, I'm glad that it, it, it flew. Otherwise, I would have killed it. Uh, yeah, but definitely a funny, funny moment a bit between them. So the, the crocodile just, just flew, uh, just uh, uh, ran away. And now they have this uh, skeleton. So let's go back to the event. This skeleton is actually uh, a remains of uh, a necromancer. Yeah, his name is Mortelius Kidom, uh, and he was murdered by some villagers after an esoteric experiment in the local cemetery. Uh, I do not know how many years ago it happened. Uh, we do have Westdale and we have uh, Marsh Haven. I would say maybe people from Westdale did this to him. Yeah. So he is now dead and it's only his remaining there. So the adventurers, they can search the skeleton 
and we'll find a compendium of yellowed parchment containing three necromantic spells. The deceased cannot move as long as its iron chains remain in place, but if it is removed, Mortelius returns in the form of a ghost. I'm not sure if Marco would do this, but maybe Hurika would. Uh, I can ask the Oracle. Would Hurika look for something uh, in this body? And the answer is no, actually. So she wouldn't. So I think they will not interact with this skeleton in the tree. So now we move from the morning to the afternoon. And we could go through here or here. So I would say that we would go to this direction. And once again, I need to roll lead the way. And, and I just realized that Maku is not so bad actually on on it uh, because he has Pathfinder and he has survival too. So in the end, Maku would roll the same amount of dice as uh, Hurika. So I'm going to roll with him, uh, although he has uh, damaged his wits, but I will roll with him in order to be able to push the roll if it is necessary. So three wits, two survival, and I would have an additional for Pathfinder, but as it is raining, I do not have it. And let's see. Oh man, no success. I will push this again. Okay, and now I have a success. I got another willpower and another damage on wits. But we have a success. Let me see if we have an encounter. An ace. A random village. Here. Side by side? What is it? I need to roll. It could be an outpost. It could be a, another village. Does it make sense to have a village so close to another village? I don't think so. Is Marsh Haven still there? Or is it... I have no idea. But we have another village. Maybe I could ask the Oracle. Maybe this is Marsh Haven and we have nothing here. Is this Marsh Haven? Uh, just, just remember, guys, that this map is outdated, right? When we give this map to the players, it's a map from hundreds of years ago, and with people that does not have Google Maps or anything like this. So it might be the case that actually Marsh Haven was not here, but here. So I could just move Marsh Haven to this hex instead. So. Is this Marsh Haven? And the answer is no, it's not Marsh Haven. Okay, so let's roll for it. So the first thing that I need to do is to roll the size of the village. So let me roll the size of the village. I'm going to roll d d6 and a 2. It's an outpost. How old is it? Five five during the blood mist. Who is the ruler of this uh, outpost? Fourteen, a cruel. Fifty four. Russ brother. Okay, a cruel Russ brother. So what's the problem in these? Uh, Outpost 66 haunted by a ghoul or a ghost. So, and this outpost is claimed to fame 44 hidden riches and a village oddity 63 allied with monster. And as it is an outpost, there is just one institution here. Let's see what they have. 54, a temple. A Russ Brother temple. 
here are the, the entries for the Marsh Haven when I rolled it in the session zero. The rule of the village is a bandit chief. The problem was a terrorizing monster and I rolled a ghost and they have beer. Uh, they are close to the marshlands. They are allied with a monster. They have a temple and they have even a militia and a stable. And the legend says ghost because it says that a priest who sucked a monster because of war and traveled to a farm located close by in a ruins, he or she, the priest, was possessed and there is an invaluable book somewhere and also a cruel ghost. So what I think is Marco had to flee, he ran away uh, to the forest, Eventually, he was found by this uh, druid who helped him. But Marsh Haven, in the end, uh, was basically controlled by these bandits for, I would say, for months, maybe. But months later, the Rust brothers arrived. And they have a mission. And this is the legend that they are pursuing. They know that in this place there is some kind of book and they were looking for it so they just established themselves in this region they built maybe a temple here for some reason that i do not know but they are now controlling these hamlets because of course they need supplies so as we roll that this temple, uh, there are some hidden riches in it. I would say that they they built this temple on top of some ruins, and they 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 are they have maybe an excavation site. I I imagine this that they might have some kind of excavation site close by, and. They are building these, um, these Rust and Him temple in this region. And now, actually, the bandits are all dead. They were exterminated by the Rust brothers. The villagers, now, they serve the Rust brothers, providing food and supplies for them. And this is what is happening here. How Hurika joins to this plot is that actually as she is a wolfkin i said that she was part of this group of bandits right that were exterminated so maybe hurika wants revenge maybe she wants to do something and for some reason she agreed on coming back here with marco why i do not know but this is something very interesting that i would love to explore this is actually the random event that we roll i would say that i need at least to roll uh scouting and as marco rolled the lead in the way i would roll for hurika the scouting just to see maybe there is some rust brothers nearby so let's see if she can notice something. So she has three wits and one scouting. And she has a success. Great. So what I believe is that as soon as they move to these um, hacks and it's raining, light rain, they are moving cautiously always and maybe uh, Hurika knows, okay, uh, Marco, we are arriving. But maybe Marco says, no, we are not arriving. Marsh Haven is not here. I remember it's it's a little bit more away from here. And she says, no, we are arriving. And she points to to a, a building uh, up front. And Marco says, but it, it wasn't here. 
years ago. What is it? And she says, Bruce Brothers. Does Marco knows about the Bruce Brothers? I don't think so. And he does not have lore, and he does not have even wits, full wits now. He only has two wits. So I would roll just these two die to see if he knows about the Rust Brothers. Oh, and actually, it rings a bell. As soon as he hears Rust Brothers, he remembers about something. In order to figure out what Maku knows about it, I'm going to check the theme oracle. So we have ten of clubs, burden, and six hearts, memory, burden, memory. I don't think that he has an experience with the Rust Brothers. He had with the bandits, but definitely maybe he heard something from his master kaizu maybe his master told him about the the rust brothers and how cruel they are and maybe even about the the their beliefs their religion so maku knows that this is not this is not a good sign so in order to go through this um, temple or moving through this hex without being noted, I would say that I need at least to have a successful stealth check. And both of my characters, they have four agility and no stealth. So I will roll, roll just once and I need to have at least um, one success. And I don't. I could push i will try to push this and i don't it means that they try to path through the temple or they try to uh, get another uh, route or another path but um i think they as soon as they are moving someone says hey you what are you doing here and when they look behind, they see this group of, I do not know, let me roll a die, two Rust brothers arguing. Who are you? What are you doing here? And I think Maku just replies, says, uh, nothing, we are just passing by. Passing by? You know where you are, boy. I think you are lost. No, I'm okay. And maybe Hurika says, uh, we are not looking for trouble. We are just passing by. And maybe the Rose brother says, oh, the dog speaks. <laughs> Maku can clearly see that Hurika is really pissed about this comment, but she knows that she cannot do anything here um, unless they can kill these um, Rust Brothers really fast uh, it would be just a matter of time to have more Rust Brothers coming after them but this is what Hurika wants right so my question is is Hurika going to attack them and this is uh, exceptional yes as soon as the Rus brother says, Whoa, the dog can speak. She immediately runs with her short sword in hand and start the combat.